so I thought I'd just quickly go over these boards with you and why I'm going to do the swap around to this build and the reason is is you know it's going to be we're going to have more fun with the GPS module on there that's for sure it does add extra weight and that's going to be um, undesirable but I am going to get some more 5mm arms because I can't actually get the old frame apart because I don't have um, very good tools for doing the job and, I mean they're not as bad as some but they're not as good as others okay so I'm a bit stuck at the moment for that but let's just go over these boards then so the board at the moment the one that I'm using is on the left hand side so the upper left and the, and the bottom left is the board that's on this quad at the moment and where it fails is one it doesn't have a barometer on it even though that may look like a barometer there's no little hole so I presume it's a timing crystal I, I don't know uh, but it doesn't have a barometer and it and it doesn't have um, the SPI for SDA and SCL um, because we need a data connection and look if you look over this side look you can see on this side it does there's it says GPS and mag here and you can see here there's the uh, data and there's the clock which go over to these which is on the underside of this board now this board also, even though it's not shown here, just where the connections are for the SDA and SCL, that there's a barometer there. Um, and there is a barometer, just like there's the, 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 the case in here for the flash uh, for the SD card. If you want to do some recording of your um, um, black box recording, the you know the data recording so this is why I'm gonna shift them out as you can see if you look at these boards they're very similar anyway I mean if you look at some of the components the way they're laid out it's pretty similar there are differences of course there are because they are two different boards but when you look at the connections across the top here and the connections across the top here they're the same um, you've got a little extra connection on this board here because there's a uh, S7 which would tell me that that's a serial connector some, but anyway so um but down the bottom here same connections so connecting up this board isn't going to be too difficult because everything's going to pretty much go in the same place apart from we're going to have these extra connections here for the um for the magnetometer um and the um satellite receiver i say satellite receiver because it's got I think two or three different types of satellites you can receive in there and so it's not just the, um, the GPS which is the American Global Positioning Satellites um, yeah so they've both got, still got OSDs they've both still got the same um, ST, STM32 uh, F405 chips on them and I think even the uh, accelerometers are exactly the same on both boards as well so that's what we're going to switch over now I don't use these because I, I don't have a power supply um, or a power distribution board that has one of these uh, connections on there these and also on this as you can see and I'm pretty sure on this one as well yeah we got one here on this one as well on the new board uh, that actually takes up a UART on this one you can see it's indicated there for RX5 and TX5 which is the receive on UART 5 and the transmit on UART 5 and that will be the same over here on this board whether it's UART 5 or not I'm not I can't remember doesn't matter though because we've got plenty to do what we want to do because fortunately enough like I said there's a built-in on-screen display onto both these boards where that's where I normally use up a another UART but on this I'm not going to so right enough to do let's take a look at the build itself and um, have a look how we're going to do this okay so here we are at the build itself now what I've done is um, I've already un unscrewed and bolted um, the top plate so we're going to take that off I've disconnected the um, receiver connection there and I've also just popped off the antenna there what I might just do to make this a little bit simpler oh no, that's fine as long as it goes back underneath for just as easy and it does uh, so that's one of the reasons why I like building into this sort of thing so if I just take that out of the way so you might see that a bit better it just makes life so much simpler I can just pop those on and off as required 
um, and we're good. We're good, we're good. Put that out the way. So, what are we going to do now? We've got to disconnect the VTX. So, that's going to be obviously coming off. The We've got a video connection and a smart audio connection to come off that. Uh, if I use this. So yeah, we've got that to come off there, off the flight controller. And all I've got to do now is just undo these four nuts and we can pop that off. Oops, I didn't do those too tight. I'll have to get a little tool in or something just to give me a little bit better grip on there. Uh, let's have a look. Could have probably done with a little bit of prepping. So if I do have to do a jump cut, we'll do a jump cut. Let's see what we can use. What did I do with that? Ah, I found it. So we might just cut that out of there, but we might just leave it. So let's just give those a little tiny. Just a little tiny. I like to to see what where my fingers are going on this. Now if you do get into building your own, make sure that you get a few halfway decent tools. They don't have to be top notch tools. Remember this isn't like, you know, we're not dealing with a tractor here or a big lorry, a truck, <laughs> as uh, my American cousins would say. And uh, I don't know what they say in uh, Australia, my cousins there, New Zealand, and Canada. And um, but yeah, yeah. In the UK, we say things like lorry. We have lorries. I think I prefer the word truck, to be honest with you. Right. Yes, yeah, so we got one that's just playing up a little tiny bit. That's about right, isn't it? Always gonna have one. Always gonna be one. But yes, yeah, so if I, I probably should have a little. Maybe it'd be good to have a little tiny spanner, but I know I do have a couple of little tiny ones, but I've never actually seen if one will fit these but the good thing about doing this sort of thing is you've always got to remember as well give yourself a bit of time have a bit of patience with yourself as well because it's, it's one of the things that really helps on this is if you've got a bit of patience and if the one underneath isn't just turning round on you so um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look for the container that I've been using just to pop the top screws in. Always good to have a little container of course so you can chuck your, your bolts and your nuts and always good to have a safe place for your nuts. Always good. So we're going to get them off. I think part of the part of the issue I've got here is the one underneath the, uh, the actual damper. I might be turning a little tiny bit when I'm trying to turn these with my fingers. But, um, yeah, it is coming undone. Just uh, it's nice, nice firm connections though. Nice firm, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's nice and firm. Or it's eating through my fingers. But again, this is another reason why you want to give yourself plenty of time. Don't don't be in a rush with these things, because the more you're rushed, you're more likely to overlook something. And you know you may find yourself having to just take it apart again, which can take time, as you can see. And depending on how long this goes on for, I'll probably end up jump cutting it. But I think it's I think it's good to see that things don't always go as smoothly as you might hope and expect. I mean, this apart from just being hovered in here hasn't been anywhere, so there's no dust on it. There's no nothing. It's all lovely. I gave all the used parts a bit of a bit of a clean down anyway, I've lost them, there we go, just get that, okay, so now I can just lift that from the top there, now I've got to remember these cables will still be connected, and I'm just going to pop that off, put that in there, now, I've got to remember now that I want to take all these off, so I'm going to literally disconnect this pull these open 
these are not rubber these ones at the top because this is just where the um this is just where the uh vtx was sitting and it's all right it's not as sensitive as the uh the flight controller for vibration it's always good to stick the flight controller on some rubber standoffs some insulating standoffs okay so that's pretty much ready to go so we've got that out of the way um the power is connected to the the board underneath the power distribution board and the one where we're gonna sort of try to remember what's what is here and we're gonna have a slightly little rethink as well for the board because if i remember rightly that um i have got I think I've got uh, my connection over here for the um, on uh, three uh, RX TX3. And I think I'm already pre-using these here, so we'll just have to take a little look at that. It makes absolutely no difference whatsoever. So I'm going to get the soldering iron on now, um, and I will come back when it's heated up. I'm not going to just sit here and wait for that to heat up. Should have probably put that on a bit earlier, shouldn't I? But hey, all this is done without any scripts or anything like that. You get it live. If something goes wrong, you get to see what happens. Um, and if it's successful, hey, that's a bonus too. So just give me a few moments for that to heat up. Uh, just a little bit of it. Try not to go in with such a big, heavy-handed tip. Uh, this is what I use for like the ESCs and bigger connections. But you, you don't want anything. You probably want to... A little tiny flat end one if you've got one or a conical but it doesn't want to be very big at all but you want the temperature up high enough that um, you don't have to leave the soldering iron on the board too long so you don't want that heat to dissipate through the board and be affecting any of the components on there so you want it to be high enough just so you can drop it on dump within a couple of seconds take off the part that you want the, uh, the, the wire okay so back in the tick Okay, so just while that's warming up, I just thought I'd say to you um, a couple of bits and pieces about your solder that you want. You don't want to use a big heavy solder. I think this is 0.3, something like that, and that's uh, that's good, but you want to keep it below 0.5 most definitely because 0.5 is too big. And uh, when it comes to like cleaning off the tip, once it's hot, and, you know, because you've left some solder on there because you've tin it at the end of your usage just to keep that, that tip nice and clean keeps the air off it as well otherwise you start getting issues with the, the solder won't actually um it doesn't connect it sort of beads up on the tip uh so you always want to make sure you tin the ends of that and keep it clean now i tend to use this sort of like brass wool stuff this is mixed it's got a bit of iron in there as well just because you know you, you buy brass wool from ebay and sometimes it comes through as iron sometimes it comes through like this nice and nice and brassy and that's what i tend to use for cleaning my tip because one i find that if you use a wet sponge some people like it they like the sound of it it's you know preference i suppose but the wet sponge will also will sort of change the temperature more so you're always faffing for temperature uh yeah we should be uh should be heated up by now so i've got my but it's, it's not very expensive soldering iron so even though it says uh, 366 it may not actually be 366 so i'm going to go straight in i'm going to put a little bit of solder i need to pull this this lamp down and i hope it doesn't affect the camera too much let's just give a little tiny little tiny tin on here you know if it goes a bit weird on the sound sorry about that it's just a it's the way i've got to i've got to position the lamp so i'm just going to take off the camera like i said you just want it on there for a couple of few seconds take off the camera and now we're going to um we are going to take off the just because i'm on this side going to take off this uh, S2 connection for the ESC and also the ground for it. You don't always need to use the ground but if you want to make sure that you've got a, a direct path you know back um, specific like these are then yeah, stick the ground on. Oh I'm going to get a bit of a grip of that first. Take that off. Cool slightly. Take that off. I'm going to take off the uh, the VTX connection. If I can actually get to it, there we go. Little tiny thing there, and I'm going to just spin this around. 
We're gonna have the um, the buzzer as well. We're gonna well, we're gonna take everything off this just because everything is needed. The only thing I'm gonna leave on just for now is this because I need to uh, <laughs> I need to put these on individually. So I'll put the boards next to each other and cross these over just because it's gonna help me keep an eye on what is ground and what is five volt because they're those two there. But as you can see, they're both black. And what is the uh, transmit receive on this side? Because again, you can see the both blacks. So it's going to be hard for me to identify um, if they're not there. If uh, if I just take them off and just leave them, the same is on the um, the same is on the uh, um, satellite receiver. We got six cables on that. Five of them are black, and uh, one, <laughs> one is red. That's really helpful. You know, you'd think that they might think, you know, the people who are producing might think, you know, just to be helpful, we're going to, uh, we're going to, um, colour coordinate them. But, hey, it's all part of the fun. So I'm going to take off this smart audio, it's just easy if I get to it like this. Sorry if my hands are in the way and you can't really see a great deal. But there's not a lot I can do, my, my setup with my camera is useless, but hey, just give me time and I'll, I'll get all these things dealt with. I don't expect this is going to be my first build or rebuild or, you know, uh, video. There's going to be plenty more to come, I'm sure, with different frames and bits and pieces as we progress. So the ground and the uh, S1 connection for the uh, the first, because <clears throat> we go one, two, three, four for the ESCs. Okay. So just for a second, let's just take this off here. I've got the um, connection underneath here as well for VCC, even though you can't see it. Underneath there is a connection, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can just pull that around. Because I have to still remember there's a connection here as well. I can get that through the top. This is the 5 volt going to the board. And I don't know if you can hear what's going on in the background, uh, but I may have to close the windows but I've had to do that a little bit longer because if I did want to put an SD card in there I've got to be able to pull that cable part away but just for now I'm just going to untwist those slightly just clean anything off that tip and I'm just going to put a little bit of pressure so I can just pull these through the board even though to be honest with you it's me doing this so I probably wouldn't have pushed them through the board anyway so do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, yeah it looks like I did push them through the board. And that was really silly of me. Uh, so this might just take a little, little extra minutes of time. It'd be good if I could just get hold of one of those at a time. There we go. I think that's one near enough off. Doesn't matter if I just knacker up the wire a little tiny bit because to be honest with you. There we go, that's through. Um we're gonna clip it down anyway, make it a little tiny bit shorter. So I'm pretty sure I can make it a little tiny bit shorter. Just to make my own life a little bit easier here right at this minute in time. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna nip that. And I'll clean it up before it goes on to something else just to save time to stop the hassle now as you can see down here we've also done the same thing but this time if I just unwrap that just once or twice it's gonna make it a lot easier for me I didn't push them through the board on the bottom what I did was I just uh, used tweezers and held them in place and undid them so it's gonna be dead easy to undo that again a little tiny bit of a with the old uh, that's it, push that apart of the way. Sorry if you can't see that. Just just a little tiny just a little tiny bit. There we go. And the board has left the quad. Now we can just shift that out of the way for a minute. Because what we want to do now is we want to bring these in. I'm gonna shift this over, it's not a problem. But this I also want to trim down a little tiny bit. So I'm I'm going to cheat because I'm going to undo it a little bit and I'm going to do each cable one by one. I don't intend on just undoing it all and then sitting there trying to fathom out again. 
what connection is what, what cables what. Because look, you can see they're twisted together. Now the reason why I twist the cables together is because, especially on the uh, the power rails, so when you your five volt here, there's going to be current flow, and when there's current flow through a cable, there's a magnetic field generated, and magnetic fields can be, you know, they can um, they can uh, be receivers of noise and they can also transmit noise so the way i look at it is if you just twist things up as much as you can a little bit different on there because it's such a big I mean, wire it's probably a bit too probably a bit too big but um if you just twist things up where you can then uh then yeah you eliminate that's what happens you see you eliminate that magnetic field it's all one cancels out the other as it were when you twist them together you must have heard the um before when it comes to things like networking and such the twisted pair twisted cables how to use now this is what happens when you make sure you keep the the flux you see it's got resin the uh, yeah um it's, it's sorry the, the the solder has flux already in it which is what helps with these connections it helps you connect uh, if it didn't have the flux it'd be very hard for it to flow properly so okay we got that off we're going to put that on um now this like i say we're going to do this uh wire by wire so what i'm going to do now so i'm just going to take these off here but what we will do is um i'll do a little uh, a little jump cut i think on this because Oh, it's only going to take a few moments, but you saw the way I did this when I when I, what I used it for was just so it makes it easier setting up the gyroscope. Um, gyroscope. For some reason that word sounds really weird to me. If it's the wrong word, I'll stick the right word on. I don't know. If I've had too much coffee today or not enough coffee today. Not sure. But uh. Yeah, so these little things don't have to take that long. I mean, it's nice to have things pre-set up, but that's not how we all work. We don't always work like that, and we could have read it dead. So I'm just going to put my soldering iron on to 200 degrees so it can just sit there and stay warm, but not too, not too warm. That it's just heat my tip too much. Put a little tiny bit of a uh, solder on it, just to keep that flux going. Keep it nice and uh, ready to be used. So let's have a look. Yeah, like I say, I, I probably want to cut these down a little bit, and I also want to. If I just compare them side by side, look. So here I've taken my five volt. Now normally. With this bit here is where you put the 5 volt in and I'm pretty sure because it looks nice and shiny that's what I've used on the other one so I'm going to use this again for the 5 volt in yes it was yeah because this it would be in the way of that um, and I may even use smaller cable because that was quite a big bit of cable wasn't it, it was quite chunky off the other bit I don't know what I've done with it now it seems to be quite chunky and we don't really need it to be that chunky and I've got some I've got some smaller cables somewhere. Oh yeah, there's a little bag of smaller cable, that'll do. Yes will do. Don't even know where this comes from what it's for, but uh, we use a little bit of black, a little bit of red. It's thinner in the other stuff, which means uh it's gonna be lighter. And it's not going to, for this very short distance, it doesn't need, to, you know, don't have to be worried, even if the board, even if, you know, we're pulling like an amp, let's say, through the flight controller. Uh, you know, with a little tiny bit of this, it's not going to, it's not really a problem at all. Not a problem at all. Nicely enough, a couple of ends already pre-tinned, ready for us to use, and I'll twist a bit of that together to ensure that, you know, got that twisted pair going, thing going on cancels out any magnetic field between itself so doesn't induce or produce interference and yes yeah, so 
let's take a look. So we're going to put our 5 volt in onto here, like I said, because that's the way it works off the... Yeah, I left that on the um, power distribution board, didn't I? And then, which means we're going to get to take our 5 volt from somewhere else for this. Now, don't want to use these, because on here it's the same, so that's 3 volt and 4.5 volt. So I think... I think, I think, I think, we're using the, the 5 volt and such there, and on the, we're using, I think we're using, um, ooh, how are we going to do this then, because we need 5 volts for that, 5 volts coming in, goes on to there, and then we got our VTX power, well, we've just taken the VTX anyway. We've got ground for that. That doesn't matter. We've got 5 volt here. And we've got uh, ground. But we're using that for the camera. Um, our VTX itself that we're going to be using is coming straight from the power distribution board. Which is better. Because then we're not pulling it through this board. Um, so really then, we want to be thinking of where we can get another 5 volt supply from. Oh, I suppose there's one there, look. Yep, there's one there. So we can just use a 5 volt from here. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to move from the receiver. I think, um, because our receiver goes underneath here and it just about fits into that, doesn't it? Which is perfect. So if anything, I may shift the receiver wires over here to TX1, so I'm not really using that. But over here, of course. And then keep the 5 volts there for that. So that does the receiver, that part there. And then all we're going to do then is make sure we've got power for our... Um, GPS. Satellite so receiver. And that, I'm going to use the power here then. Because we do have this here ground and this 5 volt here. And so I'm going to pop these off put them there and we're just going to put the power from the distribution board to here the camera will take its uh, power from over here the same as what it was on here 5 volts and that's it and the VTX will be connected there we don't need any of that for that so that's it that's that. that's how we're going to do the wiring uh, that seems simple enough so let's crack on with that then yep as we have because we'll stick uh, this onto RX3 on here as well. Because you've got to remember, I'm using a um, Crossfire protocol, so I don't need the S-Bus. Pity, it would have been nice, actually, to have something that I could use the S-Bus with. Oh, I wonder if I can actually use that with Crossfire. But never mind for now, we'll just use as it is. Um, let me just turn this up a little bit. Solder on nice and warm. Yeah, so... Um, because if I did, then I could use the I could use the um, RX2 and the S bus for a receiver. And then I'd still have another UART free. It's always nice to have a free UART, something spare, just in case I could add Bluetooth. <laughs> hmm. But anyway, so that's what we're going to do. That's the plan. So we're going to move forward with that, and of course we're going to leave the um, the connections down here for the magnetometer, and uh, yeah. So I think the first one we're going to do then is disconnect that from there, the five volt, and just pop it over here. Even though, like I said, because this is now there's going to be an excess bit of wire, so it would be nice to just cut just an inch off these. Uh, not so much this one here, I don't think. Or maybe, I reckon we could probably squeeze that down to there and still have it connected to the back of the... Um, and it's just this excess bit of wire, you see. I know it's not a lot, but it, but in a way it is a lot. It is a lot, so I think that's what I'm going to do. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this down to here. Okay, I'm going to cut it down about an inch off it and then fit it all like that. But I'm going to come back when I've done that. You know, there's not going to be, I'm not going to bore the life out of you with that. I'll come back when I've done that, okay? So we'll do a little jump cut. 
Okay, guys, so there we go. We've got the uh, GPS sorted on the back there. Uh, that will move out of the way if I want to put a data card in nicely. Uh, we've moved the power to just above the, um, the signal for the ESC and we've and everything else is just exactly the same so now I'm going to put the 5 volts on on here for the board so that'll be powering up the board and then all I've got to do then is connect up my smart audio the VTX, uh, sorry the camera um, well the whole camera uh, feed needs to go on there because it's positive minus and the um, camera itself and then the video transmitter and that's it, I mean that's near enough ready to be sat on oh and of course the VCC because we want to be able to see what the voltage is um, in the on-screen display so we can keep an eye on that always a good idea okay we managed to save a little bit of wire um, even though it's not really a savings it's going to get thrown there's a possibility I might use this bit here to connect the board um, the board to the it's only for the VCC I'm going to use this cut piece off here and, and use this for the um, the 5 volts I still need to be able to move that out of the way uh, because it will be a bit of a problem when I'm see as it goes there because I'm going to do it from underneath here and then I'm going to connect it to the board so I don't really see the, the cables coming out the side I've got a cable coming out the side here but there's not a lot I can really do about that um, but I prefer the cables to be all done inside uh, but so yeah so when I connect that of course I'll have to leave it long enough so it can sit down the edge here or down the edge here just so you can be pulled out of the way um, but not too long of course because I don't want to um, well I want to be keep it as light as possible and we can save her I know there's not going to be a lot saved there but that is still a saving nonetheless sorry about that really irritating with the LED isn't it I'll have to do something about that maybe fix up some sort of a lighting system I don't know get a different camera that doesn't see it okay so right I'm gonna get that connected there's not a great deal to tell and then we're gonna um, yeah just power up the board and, and see where we're at 